Okay. Just real quick, the first question said, um, what are three ways to reduce the cash miss rate? Well, to answer that question, you have to think about what are the sources of cash misses. There's three basic categories of cash miss, aren't there? We talked about all these. Cold start, that's the first time you fetch something. Uh, capacity, that's uh, the cash is full. There's no room for it and what you want isn't in the cash. And conflict, that's the space where your item could be, but it's full. Maybe the whole cash isn't full, but the reserve space is full, like in a, um, set associative cache, the full set is full, or in a direct map cache, the only space is full. Okay, so those are the sources. Now, let's answer the question, what are three ways to reduce the cache miss rate? Yeah, a larger cache, which one would that help, primarily? Yeah, the larger cache, just bigger. Of course, it's gonna cost more money, more transistors, but larger will help the capacity problem. Any other suggestions? Pardon? Be Increase the set associativity. If it's one, Yanni, you have a direct map cache, make it more than one. If it's four and you're still having uh, conflict misses, make it more. So increase the associativity. All right. Okay, that's a good idea for that one. Anybody have any suggestions that would reduce our cold start misses? What's a cold start miss? The first time you ask for it, it's not there. How would you reduce that? First time you ask for it, it is there. How can it be there before you've asked for it? Pardon? Yeah, kind of guess and prefetch and put in advance. That's, that's a possibility. We actually do some of that um, based upon past usage. We know what we uh, used and we could pre-guess, but there's a much more obvious way that we talked about in class. Your name's Merritt, right? Yeah, I so say, let's say I ask for Merritt and he's not there. When I bring in Merritt, should I bring in many of, any of Merritt's friends? Mm, sure. Yeah, what's that called? Merritt and Merritt's Komshu, what's that called? Block size, increase the block size. Bring in more than one word so that when I miss on Merritt, I won't miss on Merritt's Sol Komshu and his Sa Komshu and the one down the end of the street and the Uskat Komshu, I won't miss on the Komshus, right? So that's increase the block size. So if you increase the block size, we had examples in the slides where when we went to a larger block size, our cold start misses really dropped. Remember that? Yeah, and that's a little bit like what you said. It's fetch before you need it, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same idea, but fetch before you need it. So you don't miss on the first time you ask for it. It's already there. Wow, it's already here. Ne ne gazelle, ne gazelle. What kind of loca mm, lo locality? locality? Spatial. Spatial. The assumption is, if I miss on Merit, there's two things that we're going to guess. I'll ask for Merit again. What kind of locality is that? Temporal. Uh, most likely, his data or his code I may repeat. And the second kind is, if I miss on Merit, or if I ask for Merit, whether I miss or hit, I'm going to probably be looking for his neighbors, whether those are code neighbors or data neighbors. And we all sort of agree down in our gut, that makes sense. The code you know, the assembly you've seen, and even the high-level stuff that you've written and seen, kind of works that way, doesn't it? Not always, not 100%. Sometimes locality is real tight and a small cache would do great. Other times locality is pretty big and spread out and you would need a bigger cache. So since you can't vary cache size according to locality, what does it mean? Some programs are going to have a higher hit rate and miss rate than others. Yeah, that's just a fact of life. But in general, uh, there is a thing called locality. Depending on how you write the code, you can make it tighter or write the data structures or make it looser. And we'll see some of that a little bit later. Okay, so one factor influencing miss rate isn't just cache design, it's the program itself. If it's real donic, it's gonna have a higher miss rate. If it's real tight, it's gonna have a lower miss rate. That's natural too, isn't it? Okay, all right, that was the first question. What three things uh, can be done to reduce the miss rate? Second question was, what is the most common way that means out of all the possible ways, what's the most common way to reduce the miss penalty? Ooh, that's how much time you spend when you miss. What are you doing when you miss? What are you doing when you miss? You're going to? No, no. You're going to the next level down in the hierarchy, whatever that is. So you're going to the next level down. And to speed that up, what could you do? 
What could you do? Well, one thing you could make it smaller, make the next level down smaller, so it, therefore it'll be faster. What's another thing you could do? Make the amount you get from there smaller. That says decrease the block size. So make it smaller so your access time is faster. Make what you get from it smaller. But those aren't the most common ways because both of those are going to have a negative effect on other things. Making a smaller next level means you'll likely miss there and have to go to the next level. Making a smaller block size means, yeah, you'll reduce the miss penalty, but then other parts. Okay, so what's the most common way to reduce the miss penalty between you and the next level? Hmm? Pardon? Between you and the next level, it's too slow. What do you suggest we do? Between, yeah, an aracat. Put in something in between the two levels, which is, tell me about it. What should I put between me and the slow level? What should I put? Faster than the one below, but not as fast as you. And how about size? Much more than the first level. Bigger than you by a lot, but smaller than the one below it. Yeah, exactly. You stick in a, a middle level. Okay, level two, level three. Okay, what do you think people have been doing between main memory and disk? There's a huge miss penalty for missing in main memory, right? So what do you think people have been doing? Put in an aracat. What's it called? RAM disk, disk cache, things like that, right? Ever heard, anybody heard of any of those? Disk cache? Disks come now with some memory right on the disk controller and guess what if you fetch the disk block lately it holds on to it in case you ask for it again it doesn't have to spin the motor and move the disk it says hey I got it here it is Buren. very fast hit rate it's a cache between main memory and disk okay so wherever you don't like the miss penalty you can slide in an aracat right there a middle level and speed it up so we talked about that in the last set of slides and the book has a whole section on it called putting in you know additional levels of caching Okay, in particular, if, if it's processor and main memory, put in a cache. If it's between that cache and the main memory, put in a second level. And if it's between the second level and the main memory, put in a third one. We saw the trend. That's what processors are doing. They're sticking in multi-level caches between processor and main memory. But I want to suggest to you, you can also stick them in between main memory and disk. Stick them in wherever you like them. Okay. What's registers? What's registers? It's a little cache between the CPU and the first level of the real cache, isn't it? Yeah. It's just kind of the tip of the iceberg or the top of the mountain, you may say. OK, that's the second question. Third question said, how many one-word blocks can be cached in a four-way set associative cache whose size is four megabytes? OK, how many bytes in a word, for starters? Four bytes equals one word, right? Great. When we ask for things from memory, are we asking for a byte or a word? So the thing we want to store in cache is words, right? Now, how many words can we store in a block? Because caches don't store words, they store blocks. How many words can we store in a block? Depends. How big is the block size, right? We just hit, you increase. But this problem said one block equals one word equals four bytes, therefore, right? So therefore, every block stores four byte word. OK, then the next question is, how many blocks are there in this cache? Well, there's four mega bytes. So that's equal to how many blocks? One mega blocks. OK, great. Well, now we know how many blocks there are. Uh, is it a direct map cache? No. What is it? Four-way set associative cache. Great. So that means that we have set size equals what? No. Set size equals four what? Four blocks. Yeah, great. Four blocks. Okay. So that means that in every set, we have four blocks. How many sets do I have? 
How many sets? Hmm? Yeah. One million blocks divided by four blocks per set. equals 256 kilo sets. So now I know I start here and I go to 2 to the whatever that is 18th minus 1 for my index. So now I know how many sets I have and do we answer the first part of the question um, how many one word blocks can be cached? Well if I know how many blocks are in this whole thing how many words are stored. No one says how many blocks. There we go. So that's one answer and that's the other answer. Okay, uh, was that extremely intellectually challenging requiring higher math that only graduate students can do? <laughs> I'm joking. That, that I expect you to be able to do. It's not very hard, is it? Are there any concepts there that you didn't know or didn't understand? Four bytes to a word, pretty standard in 32-bit processors. One word per block that was given in the problem. Four blocks per set, that's what four-way set associated means, four blocks in the set. What's the block size? What's the block size here? One word. So when we miss, we just get merit. We leave all these comb shoes back there in the building. Sorry, they have to stay home. Only you come down with us, okay? So we don't have a big block size. Right? We have a one word block size. Uh, but we got four members of every set. So it's four-way set associative. So now we know how many sets we have. Okay. We can hold a million blocks in this memory. Okay. All right. Um, that's all the answers to the quiz questions. Um, the first one and second one were just like concepts. Third one was a little bit getting warmed up to the kind of exam problems that you'll be asked to do. Okay. Calculate, you know, things like how much can it hold and cash indexes and things like that. One last thing we could do, and I guess we should do, is let's ask ourselves this question. Here's my 32-bit address. Can you tell me what fields the address have for index and tag and byte offset, things like that? Okay. Well, we know for starters, I have two bits here at the end for which byte am I referring to. So when I have 0, 0, what do I get? I get a whole word. When I fetch you know, an instruction, it always ends in 0, 0. But I get four bytes, so I get a whole word. Okay? But you can talk about, for data, you can talk about, I want that byte, I want that byte. You know, we can actually get right down to the, 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 the byte level. Okay, then the rest of it is 30 more bits. How do we break up that 30 more bits? Pardon? Eight. eight and 22, okay. I'll be interested to hear about why the eight and why the 22. Can you give reasons behind that? Eight bits for tag and 22 for index. Of course, that means index into the cache. That means referring to which of these lines in the cache. How many lines do I have or sets do I have in the cache? They call them, sometimes they call them lines. How many do I have? to the 18th, right? We already calculated that, didn't we? 256 kilo sets. So how many index bits do I need? 18, yeah. Okay, so 18 means I need 12 tag bits, okay? Now, when I give it that 18 bit index, that says, look on this line. You picked one of these, and now what am I supposed to do? Is it that one, is it that one, is it that one, is it that one? How do I know? By what? Byte offset. No, not, not by byte offset. This is going to be 32-bit word. So it'll contain four bytes. So what I'll know is that's the byte I want by byte offset, or that's the byte I want by byte offset. But this will not be determined by byte offset. What will this be determined by? Yeah, not this one, this one. How do I know? Tag. Tag, exactly. So what am I actually storing here in the cache? What am I actually storing here? I'm actually storing the tag plus, yeah, the memory item, the memory word. Yeah, 
So I've got a word and then I've got his tag as well. And if the tag matches that, and if the valid bit is also set, yes, yes, then that's the one you want. Okay? Now, do I have to look here, and then look here, and then look here, and then look here to find out if I have a hit or miss? Or the shil olorach, do I look at all four one by one? Is that what we're going to do? Sounds kind of slow, doesn't it? What am I going to do? What are we going to do to get fast hit or miss decision? How am I going to how am I going to even know if this tag equals that tag? How will I do that? Index those. What will I do? Index those. No. Right. Yeah, use a comparator. Use a little equals box and send in two things. Tag from the cache and tag from the address and have a very fast two level digital circuit that says are every single bit equal, yes or no? Yeah, it's simple. Okay, now, that'll help me to compare the address tag to one of the ones from the cache. Shall I use this comparator four times? No, what should I do? Yeah, I get four comparators and do the hardware in parallel and don't do R to shill. Remember, that was the whole point of um, uh, CS223 was to understand you can do things slow in time, if you only want to spend a little space, or you can do them fast in time if you want to spend a big space. Space time trade off. Space time trade off. You want to spend more space, you got some transistors, let's save some time. Okay, we'll do them in parallel with four hardware uh, in parallel. So, four comparators. For how many bits comparison was it? 12 bit comparison, that's not a big deal. How do I compare two 12 bit numbers? What's inside that little equals box? Anybody remember? Exclusive OR gates, one per bit. If they all say yes, 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 equal, and then the OR of them all is yes, they all said equal, bingo, you're done. Or the AND of them all says equal, you're done. Okay, that's all we want to do there. Let's go to our uh, lesson now. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so the last thing we looked at was this nice comparison of two modern processors and their level one, level two, and level three caches. Raise your hand if you were here at the last lesson when we did that. Okay, if you weren't, you missed a good review of everything that we've done so far in, the, um, in Chapter 5. So now we're going to review the first set of slides. I'm at the end of the set of 5A slides, and so the next three are good summaries. This is what I would like you to say, yeah, okay, I got that, or no, I didn't get that. I better go back and study that more. Here's a great exam review, a great study review for the concept so far in Chapter 5. Okay, how can we reduce the hit time? That's not a quiz question. That's another issue. Low hit time, low miss time, high hit rate, low miss rate. But miss rate and hit rate are related, so that's actually three questions. How do I increase the hit rate and reduce the miss rate? We talked about that. How do I decrease the miss penalty? We talked about that. How do I decrease the hit time? We're talking about that right now. How do I make a fast cache that I can get in and get out quick when there's a hit? Make it small. Make it direct, direct mapped. Why is direct map faster than set associative? Oh, we did that last time. You know, we're talking about set associative here. You just said you got to have four of those. We'll do them in parallel, but still we're claiming it's slower. Direct map would be faster. Why? Well, you better go back and look at the hardware, look at the lesson, look at the text. There, there's a direct map has a penalty. It is, I mean, sorry, set associative is slower. It has a penalty. Yes, it helps you in hit rate, but it hurts you in hit time. Smaller blocks. You can get them out quicker if they're smaller. Oh, that's too bad because we just said bigger blocks help you with the miss rate and hit rate, but they hurt you with the hit time. And then for writes, some things you can do here, like no write allocate. There's no such thing as a, a hit on the cache. You just write it to the write buffer. In other words, we don't write to the cache. We write to the write buffer. Um, on write allocate, though, if you have that where you have to write to the cache, uh, to avoid having to write it twice, uh, what you should do is first check for a hit um, and then write um, the pipeline writes via delayed write buffer to the cache. So, you know, you do it via a write buffer so you don't have to wait. That's the first question. How do you make faster hit times? Now, some of the answers there are going are to be changed when we go to here. How do you reduce the miss rate? We pretty much talked about these. Bigger cache, more flexible placement by having bigger associativity, larger blocks. We talked about that to reduce the um, uh, cold start penalty and in just in general increase our spatial locality. Look, block sizes are typically not four bytes, they're typically 64 bytes. We saw in both of the previous uh, processors, 
if you look the block size, 64 byte block, 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 64 byte blocks. How many words is that? How many words is that? If they're 32 bit words, four bytes, it's 16 words. If they're 60, if they're 64 bit words, you only eight bytes, it's still eight words. Eight word block size or 16 word block size. Okay. Moving on. Um, and then having a victim cache. It's a small buffer where when you have to kick something out of cache, uh, you don't throw it all the way down to the next lowest level. You keep it in kind of reserve. Maybe you'll need it again soon. So it's like a little extra place to save your losses in case you were wrong, in case you kicked it out. But actually, victim means you kicked it out. But let's hold it. Let's don't throw it all the way down to the next lowest level. It's kind of like a little in-between cache, you might say. Okay, and then finally reduce the miss penalty. We said the biggest way to reduce the miss penalty is to use multiple levels. But look, there's a few others here as well that, that we talked about. We mentioned them. Um, smaller blocks make, make it faster to miss and get what you want. Using a write buffer to hold the dirty blocks, which have to be replaced. Checking the write buffer on, uh, or the victim cache on uh, read miss. Maybe you get lucky and you find it without having to go down lower. For large blocks, fetch the critical word first and go ahead and give it. If there's a big thing you're fetching, get the one you want early. Change the order even so that you don't wait for them all. Uh, of course, use multiple levels. Um, and faster backing store for improved memory bandwidth. And there's wider buses. And, but you know, this is speed up the architecture of the lower level so it gives you uh, a faster uh, miss uh, penalty. Okay, now, so here we're going to summarize um, the kind of things we've, those were the crucial questions, because there's three factors to cache performance, aren't there? Hit time, miss penalty, hit rate, miss rate. Those are the three things, and we talked about them all. Unfortunately, they sort of pull against each other. Some say do this, and others say no, 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 do the opposite of that. So it's a fine art. Really, we ought to go over to Guzel Sanat and say, hey, can you help us figure out a beautiful sculpture here or a beautiful painting? Because this is, this is an interesting balance, OK? Try to get all the factors right. And that's why you saw that AMD and Intel don't just zoom to the exact same solution. There's some variables here. Even for same programs, engineers might analyze and say, no, I think this is a better way to go. No, that's a better way to go. All right, so we've got several dimensions that are interacting. This is an attempt to kind of show it. Yes, associativity can be a variable. Block size can be a variable. And overall, cache size can be a variable. And um, the replacement policy is another one. How do you choose who to kick out when you have to bring somebody new in? Uh, whether you go with right through or right back, and whether you go with right allocation or no right allocation. So there's really six dimensions to this. This shows the major three here. And the optimum choice is some kind of compromise. Look here. Here's the best spot right here. Okay. Now, is it best for factor A? No. The best for factor A is over here. Is it best for factor B? No. But the overall best is the sweet spot where this red curve says I'm minimal right here, okay, where that's something like miss rate. Okay? So this is just looking at two factors together in a kind of a two-dimensional optimization. You can imagine if we looked at this, it would be very more complicated to model. And um, it's a compromise. It depends on the access characteristics, the workload, uh, whether you're looking at uh, the instruction cache or data cache or translation look aside buffer or a unified cache. And it depends on the technology that are available to you and the cost of those technologies. And one little word to the wise is simplicity often wins. Have you ever heard of KISS? K I S S? It's, yeah, of course we know what you know, OpenMEC means, but I'm talking about the engineering KISS. You know what the engineering KISS is? Keep it simple, stupid. Don't try to be so smart that you make it complicated. You'll find out that actually that's the worst thing to do. Keep it simple. Now, the last one, stupid, is kind of an insulting word. But keep it simple, and you'll be smart. Keep it simple, smarty, I guess it'd be better than stupid. Because the people that keep it simple often are the wisest. And the ones that get it overly complicated are foolish. Okay, so it's an engineering kind of a daim, but it, there's a lot of wisdom to it. And you see it showing up right here. Simplicity often wins. Not always. Not always, but often. OK, um, there's our summary of what we've done so far. What have we done so far? We've covered memory hierarchy, the caching principle, or the reasons behind it, two different localities that seem to be uh, dominating, dominating our program per behavior, namely uh, temporal and spatial. Then we looked at direct map caching. Then we looked at how to help with uh, associative uh, associativity. And we looked at trade-offs. And we talked about the three big questions. Actually, we've really covered the cache principles very well here. 
So now when we move on to some other issues in caching, like between main memory and disk, when to move a page out or in, and how to uh, have virtual memory and paged memory systems that are fast, we're going to find these same principles apply again. We're going to come back to caching. We're going to see that what we learned on memory caching works as well on disk caching. Right? So once you learn the principles, you're good to go. Okay? This, the, the key in engineering education is not to learn technology, it's to learn high-level principles which are good for the long haul. Every programming language you right now know will be probably a fossil in 10 or 15 years. Every processor, every, everything you know that's a technological detail is going to be gone. In fact, the pace of change is imp increasing. So don't hang on tight to technology. Hang on tight to principles, to basics, to foundational understandings, and then you'll be able to go with the uh, changes that you'll see during your career. All right, so having said that, um, I'm going to go to the second slide set, but I think it'd probably be better if we took some time for questions, reviewed, um, and then took a break. So that's what I'm inclined to want to do. Um, so ask me whatever's bothering you about caching. If there is anything. If not, I can assume you know it perfectly. You're experts. You're ready to take the pen and teach. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, Merit. I don't want something about associativity. Yeah. Uh, does uh, lesson, uh, they have talked about uh, different blocks and also they have talked about a block having four different spots? Or eight or two, yeah. Or, or, and we have zero one and another set zero one. Uh, we can have. Uh, Actually, in this case, we had 0, 1, 2, 3, and we had 256,000 sets. In this case, we could choose four different places. Yeah, right. So in the, your example, associativity is two. It's two-way set associative. And this one is four-way, but in the Intel and AMD examples, it was 16-way and 8-way. The set size doesn't have to only be two. The set size can be four or eight or 16, right? Okay. If you have two, you need two comparators. Here, we need four comparators. Intel and AMD need eight or 16 comparators. Yeah? I mean, yeah. Uh, okay. having uh, different sets and associativity is similar. Okay. Set zero is the first set. Set one is the next set. This cache, if I stop here, is four-way set associative. If I stop here, it's four-way set associative. If I stop here, it's four-way set associative. The only thing that changed is the size of the cache and the number of sets. But the set size is four because the name of the cache is four-way set associative, okay? It's set associative because I have sets, and it's four-way because I have four members in a set. If I have two-way set associative, that's the cache you're talking about that we had in the example. If I have two-way set associative, then I just stop the picture here. It's two-way set associative, okay? So the definitions of the words uh, need to be the same for you and me, then we can communicate about the problem. Now, that we got the same definitional set and we're using the words in the same way, can you ask your question again? Yeah. So that, I, what's bothering you? No. We have a cache, one-way cache. Oh, then it's called direct map cache. One. If we have a one-way set associative cache, it means that every lo location can only hold one, and therefore uh, set zero equals block zero equals index zero, and that's all there is, okay? So go ahead. So it's now back to, it's now back to direct map cache. If the set size is one, it's just direct mapped. Yes, we have direct map cache, but we have uh, different sets inside that cache. Different sets. Yes. Well, we have different blocks or indexes or locations in that cache. If you want to call them sets, call them sets, but normally the word set starts when the number is greater than one, you know, two or four or eight. So yeah, you could say we have different sets, but the set size is only one, so therefore there can only be one member. Go ahead. In a direct map cache, we have different sets. Yeah, I agree. Go ahead. I mean the set is, uh, we have a 
zero place one, then again zero, then no, no, not again zero. Uh -huh, no, no, no. This next one is set two. This next one is set three. Yeah. There is no second place for index zero. Well, are you talking about this? Here's memory. And this location maps here. This location maps here. Let's say the total number of blocks in or sets in memory is four. Then this one maps here, this one maps here. Where does this one map? Zero, one, two, three. Where does index four location four in memory map? Yeah, exactly. It goes back to here. Back to here. So you can see that it's n to one. So I have many mapping to this set or block. And I'm going to have conflict misses. Now what happens if I what happens if I make my set size to be two? Okay? What's going to happen now? Uh, no. I mean well, what is it what happens here? Same thing, but the n things that all map here, now they have two possible places they could be instead of one possible place they could be. So I'm allowed to have a chakishma that doesn't cause a miss. Yeah, they both want to be in the same hotel, but I have two rooms. And I can put one customer in one room and one customer in the other room. OK. Yeah. Does that help? All right, I think what happened is you saw an example that confused you, and you're still not able to put that example in these categories. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay, so go back and look at the example again. And, and believe me, that, that example cannot be some other category I didn't teach. It's this, and you have to learn the set size. If it's two, which I think you're telling me it was, then it's this. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Can you explain Is your name Turkair? Yeah, yeah Turkair. What's your question? And again, the ways to reduce the miss penalty, uh, which is not general ones. Uh, not general ones. Well, they're all general, but no, the, we said the most popular one is to stick in a new level of cache. But other than the other ones. Let's then let's go back to the slide because I think that it was a nice slide. It summarizes them all. Okay, one more time. He said, "What are the ways to reduce the miss penalty?" besides this one here. He understands that one. He wants to talk about all the others. I think that's a great question because it'll be good for everybody to review them. Smaller blocks. That means that instead of 64 bytes, Intel and uh, AMD agree on 16 byte blocks. How would that reduce the miss penalty? Let's think about it for a minute. I asked for it from the cache below me. It says, sorry, Abby, I don't have it. I missed. So now where's it going to come from? The one below that, we hope, if we hit there. If it is a hit there, we bring it up. How much are we bringing? Less. Well, I think we all understand, don't we, that transferring less takes less time than transferring more. So bigger blocks take more transfer time. Smaller blocks take less transfer time. Transfer time is part of the miss time. Okay. Is that clear enough for everybody? There's the find it time, and then there's the transfer it time. Okay. All right, second one, use a write buffer to hold dirty blocks being replaced so we don't have to wait for the write to re complete before reading. All right. So just basically, we'll just s s shorten all that down to use a write buffer. Okay. All right. So if I use a write buffer, um, what does it mean? I'm supposed to uh, write into cache over the top of the current value, but I miss the current value is not there. So what could I do with no write buffer? I could. What are my choices? Bring up the lower one and wait for this miss penalty and then write on top of it. What's another choice? Put it in a write buffer and tell the write buffer, you do that job, I'm going on back to my work. Yeah. So write buffer obviously is going to reduce the miss penalty. There'll still be the transfer and the write, but you don't have, you're free, now you go back to work. Okay, so write buffer says, hey, I'm not waiting. I'm returning to my pipeline. Okay, so that clear how that would speed up the miss penalty? Okay. Check the write buffer on a read miss. Okay. Let's think about this. You try to read it and it's not there. So normally, what would be the thing to do? Get it from the lower level. Okay. Bring it up. Miss penalty. Why would checking the write buffer 
be an interesting thing to do. Remember that who puts things in the right buffer? You do. So you don't remember what you put there, but looking could have what possible benefit? Maybe the thing that you need to read and you can't find is actually in the right buffer because you wrote it and then it got somehow kicked out of cache and so it's still there doing its writing or waiting in a query Remember the write buffer is going to have its own query to, to because it's slow to the right to the next level. You may be able to find it there. So it's kind of like a victim cache. It's a place where there's faster access to the data. So before you wait the long miss penalty, check the write buffer. Perhaps it's there. Uh, That's the idea. Which uh, values uh, is the write buffer is composed of? It's composed of writes that you need to do to a slower, lower level cache, which are waiting for that slow write time to happen. So you put it there. And if you don't find it in your fast, high level cache, you should look there because maybe you'll get it quickly. Uh, the values are uh, kicked out from the cache? Possibly kicked out from the cache, possibly not kicked out from the cache. But what is the other possibility? It's coming from the low level values Let's see if I can do this here. Tell you what, um, that's a technical question. I'm going to take you personally during break time because I think people want to break. Okay, so let's take a 10 minute break. When you come back, um, return and we'll, we'll start the new set of slides. I'll, I'll answer your question up at the board. Okay, so see you in 10 minutes. Don't go away to <laughs> Mayfest, please. Come back for the second hour. Uh, I'll promise you a reward if you come, all right? so. so. I can't play music or juggle, but I promise you, you'll be glad, glad you came. All right, so.